Papua New Guinea's southern highlands. Beneath these mountains lie great riches, vast deposits of natural gas that promise to transform the lives of these people and this nation. We call it the light table. Light table is the name that we had even before the exploration. For Simon Akanda, a leader of the Tugaba tribe, the gas has spiritual value. Yeah, my people do sacrifice to the mountain, uh, to the fire that never dies, and it was in that mountain. And this is the very mountain which uh, uh, did an exploration and found out there was a gas in the, in the mountain. For Sir Michael Samare, Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister, it's the commercial value that counts. In December, he signed off on a $16 billion plan to ship the gas to Asia. This is Papua New Guinea's biggest ever business deal. It promises to double the country's GDP. Ladies and gentlemen, we now propose a toast to the PNG LNG project and the prosperity of Papua New Guinea. But not everyone is toasting the deal. It's just like raping a, uh, a raping a woman without uh, her accepting you to uh, have sex. It's just like raping a woman. They're going to rape our resources. Simon Akanda says his people have a prophecy, warning them not to give the gas away to white men or red legs. We were told not to give the fire to a red leg. To fulfill the prophecy, uh, we, need, we want to get the maximum from the project. It's not an ordinary gas project. It is an extraordinary gas project. Many landowners in the project areas are afraid the promised riches are going to pass them by. I found confusion and anger from one end of the proposed gas pipeline to the other. M1, 2, this is the first time. What's going to happen if the developer and the government go ahead with this project without your participation? Uh, there's going to be a lot of chaos. I can promise you, I, I can guarantee you that there's going to be a problem. Flying from Port Moresby to the Southern Highlands with Simon Akanda, we follow the same route as the pipeline. The project operator, ExxonMobil, will pipe the gas 700 kilometres from Hydes and Juhar in the Southern Highlands to a plant just outside Port Moresby. This is where the LNG plant will be constructed. Before it gets there, the pipeline will pass through the territory of hundreds of different tribes, starting with the Tugaba, Simon's own. A modest gas project has already been operating here for many years. The majority Australian-owned company, Oil Search, uses gas from hides to generate electricity for the Porgera gold mine. Yet the people here live without power. Most survive off the forests, rivers and carefully cultivated gardens. They have little to do with the cash economy. How do people generally feel about this project? Are people excited? Yeah, they're excited. They've been excited for 20 years, you know. There's a power project here. And they've been excited about that power project. And then what that power project brought to this community is zero. You, you look at the school, you look at the hospital, you look at the power in the, uh, in the uh, 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 all such compound and then the, the houses next door. We are graduated. Uh, uh, 20 years education of uh, the gas project in this in this area. 
But isn't it the role of the government to provide hospitals, to provide schools? What is the problem there? Well, well I'm waiting for the government. Government has, has never come to this place. This is the Hyde's gas-fueled power station owned by Oil Search. <laughs> when we drove up a hill to film the plant, we came upon these villagers preparing to ambush a rival clan, part of a long-running feud. This is a volatile region, bristling with weapons. I asked the villagers how they feel about the gas plant below. <laughs> Peter Botton is the managing director of Oil Search, which has a 29% stake in the LNG project. I can talk very much around oil projects. Um, the LNG project, I think, is best uh, uh, discussed primarily with the operator Exxon. Exxon Mobil, the project operator, refused to give an on-camera interview, but Botton agreed to talk about his existing oil and gas operations and says landowners have every right to complain about the lack of government services. The broad revenue streams that government have received from the various projects uh, yeah, since um, uh, over the last 20 odd years has been substantial and you don't see that, that uh, service provision into many of the resource areas and that's a very valid point. The villagers in Hydes live next to a gas powered electricity plant but they live in darkness. Can you understand why they feel as though the government's failed them? We acknowledge that concern but that's water under the bridge. I am of the strong opinion that this is the time for us to start getting things right. Last year, government ministers and officials arrived in the highlands to meet with landowners. Over many months, detailed agreements had been negotiated to work out how the financial benefits from LNG would be divided between landowners and local, provincial and national governments. In the case of both oil and gas, uh, the, the broad range of, of consultation, in my view, is almost unprecedented around the world. Um, there's no country that I know that goes into this in such a democratic way, such a large way, and involves so many people. Landowners and provincial governments could receive up to 7% of project equity plus royalties and share the proceeds of a development levy. Many landowners signed the agreements, but others, determined to hold out for a better deal, including more equity, did not. Me, I didn't sign it. Me and my group, my rest of the people, we didn't sign it. Uh, we want the equity in the project. I mean, the landowners are as equal as the project LNG itself. This has been uh, an error of thinking for a long time, and this error has been propagated by politicians going out and talking to landowners and addressing them as resource owners. Michael McWalter is an oil and gas consultant and government advisor. Constitutionally, the natural resources belong to all the people of the country, uh, not just those people who happen to have it under their feet, on their, on their lands. Simon Akanda is attending a public meeting in Como which is set to become ground zero for the LNG project. But even landowners like George, who support the project, are anxious about how it will disrupt their lives. 
Although there'll be some compensation, more than 500 hectares of bush will be cleared around Como to make way for an international airport and gas conditioning plant. How will the survive the oil one? And by ExxonMobil, you must take into consideration all the sending by your bar and oil. Me back, come for some power of pike. Bobby Bomb slap, what a tackle did that? Even on the government said low, a diplomy, sight. Landowners from Como and other parts of the country have already tried to slow work on the project, blocking roads and cutting down power lines. Some threaten to take things even further, raising the spectre of the civil war fought in Bougainville. No project project by stop. No, some Bougainville make them longer than by stop. No history by stop. No club government. No company blow by. Gun in me blow. Killing me blow and me blow by. Die history by stop. No club. Many of those talking tough now previously gave ExxonMobil their support. It's enough to make Simon lose his temper. You talk, you come long grand blow me, I mean give me your grand blow me. Or simply you sign it, now you sign finish now come here. Now you talk no what? But still you talk yes. Or the whole of the Papa Grand Yard to write finish now. Me blow my gummy go walk. Now I can tell you, sir, you complain nothing out of some room again. Opposition to the government and ExxonMobil follows the length of the pipeline. Community leader Palita Kaware is from Kopi in the Gulf province, where the pipeline will end up before entering the sea. To get there from Port Moresby takes four hours by road and more than nine hours by boat. These waterways are the main way in and out for equipment and materials headed for Kopi. On our way, Polita stops to talk to some of the traditional custodians of this river. She believes they're entitled to compensation for the river's use. Hours up river, we find the oil search camp at Kopi. 2,000 ton, the crane. Which ExxonMobil is busy expanding for the LNG project. Well, this batch came in two weeks ago. This is all ExxonMobil. There's a lot of extra work at the camp that locals complain jobs are going to people from other areas. Across the river from the camp is Kopi village, where there's no power or water, and it's a seven hour walk to the nearest public phone. Recently, some local men, including Polita's adopted son, attacked the contractor's camp at Kopi, frustrated by the lack of work. The boys got angry because they want to be employed. That's the whole reason. Okay. Boys went down and attacked the camp just because of that same reason. To my understanding, it's okay. They can, they can attack because they have their rights. They want to, be, they want to work. According to the police commander of Gulf Province, police arrived in an oil search vehicle after the attack, took the men away and beat them. Me go inside there, or party me go inside now, me go, me go down the base. Me go down the base now, um, some 
Nabla tupla mangi pin stab la hab, all pay team na stab la hab. This la hab lo face blow all la, body blow all la, platino isi si. Employment is just one of many possible flashpoints between the developer and locals. Wojte Arare believes the oil and gas businesses are taking advantage of her when they use this road through her land. So she registers her protest by stopping the traffic. As I'm filming, a vehicle approaches her roadblock. In fact, the car belongs to a local landowner company, which does contract work for oil search, and Wojta grudgingly agrees to let it pass. In many areas, anger at those benefiting from oil and gas fuels conflict between landowners. Are you concerned about the possibility of individual landowners and landowner groups holding the project hostage because of their grievances? It demonstrates the democratic vibrancy we have in our nation. That's one way of putting it. We have the independence of the court, the judiciary, and the government does not interrupt. No doubt, with at the commercial level, delays will take place and uh, state shareholders will lose money. But we need to go through those processes. You've seen the... So you're, uh, you're resigned to that? We are resigned to that and we will manage them. The villages of Porobada and neighbouring Boira are paying a high price for the coming LNG bonanza. <laughs> They're close to where the LNG plant will be built and hope to gain a share of the spoils. But their greed led to tragedy. In January, four men from Porobada were killed by their neighbours from Boira. Australian contractors were building a road to the site of the new LNG plant. The promise of compensation for whoever owned land next to the road triggered rival claims and violence. The actual gas plant, uh, LNG gas plant will be built in, on, on this, in, in this area. Igor Maori is the chairman of a local landowner company. He's taking me to where the killings took place with a village councillor who found the bodies. This place was uh, covered by the blood and we knew that uh, the body was killed here and they were, the body was thrown back to the, in the bushes. The four men from Porabada were shot and hacked with bush knives yeah, by villagers from Boira. It was very brutal. It was just too brutal. It was beyond expression. Uh, the coastal people, we don't kill people like that, you know. Gao Karoho was one of the young men who died because of the land dispute. He left a widow and two young children, including a baby daughter who was born the night he was buried. On the night the men from Porabada were killed, the villagers from Boira fled their homes, terrified of reprisals. Boira was deserted for six weeks before people started trickling back. 
we flew because we knew they were they were coming to kill us, take revenge on the same night. So we have to flee for our lives. These the women say the LNG, LNG project LNG. has brought out the worst in people. I think the LNG is bringing us good things, but people people are maybe primitives. Does it make people go a bit crazy? They yeah, go crazy. Crazy because you want money. Everybody wants money. So when we're handing yeah. money out to people and taunting our own people. Uh, if you put a million dollars between the, yourself and myself uh, and say whoever claims that ground there can have it, we might have a little fight. So far, any violence has been sporadic and easily diffused. But some landowners warn that if their grievances aren't addressed, people will take matters into their own hands. We know that there is a weapon. Even more than the defence force of this country can have. Even worse than that will happen. We have experienced the Bougainville crisis. 